All right, so let's have an overall look at what exactly is happening regarding geopolitics and financial markets and real estate. Okay, let's have a bit of an overview to give you the information necessary, looking at realistically without all the fake news coming out from the government. So let's start off with financial markets. So financial markets have been pushed up on the hope of reducing an expectation of reducing interest rates in 2024. Hasn't happened yet in January, February, may happen in March, unlikely, more likely in April and May, but rates will go down in the US, in Canada, and obviously in the UK and Europe. This year is going to see falling interest rates, irrespective of inflation. The central governments, especially the US Central Bank, which is the Fed, has thrown in the towel regarding fighting inflation because they stated last November that they're going to reduce interest rates in 2024 minimum three times which what really they're saying is that we don't give a damn about inflation we're going to reduce interest rates knowing that the economies are not doing well so the central banks have to reduce interest rates they haven't got a choice simply because if they don't then the economy is going to flounder it's already floundering in Germany and in the UK, with the UK producing negative GDP and Germany also producing negative GDP. Remember, Germany is in a bigger problem because they are much bigger industrial giant than the UK and their industry is contracting and reducing due to climate changes and these postgraduates know-it-alls or don't know-it-alls thinking that the world's going to combust due to climate change. That's not going to happen. But heavy industry in Germany due to the fact that the part of the EU is coming to a stand is coming to a standstill. So there is a problem there with heavy industry. So um, econ economic conditions are very, very tough in Europe, in the UK and in the US. The only difference in the US is that you've got um, drug related crime and you've got homeless, fentanyl, zombie-like people living on the streets of California, New York, and in other states, which has caused major drops in commercial property and other uh, real estate. So that is a bigger problem with more than 7.8, I think 10 million illegal immigrants being brought in by the Biden administration, who is totally out of control, probably the worst president ever. That's my political view. It's putting my 10 pence worth in there. I think Biden is absolute crap, just to be just to be clear. So the US economy is not doing well. They are manipulating numbers in an election year because they want Biden to get back in there in 2024 but he's so senile he's got such a high level of de or low level a high level of dementia that they are fooling themselves but they'll do anything to avoid trump coming in so the markets are being pumped up the eco economic numbers are being manipulated and what they're trying to do is give the u.s public and globally a feeling that the u.s is doing really really well but its fiscal policies are in disarray because they're spending more than two trillion, I think 3.6 trillion a year on new debt, which is supporting the wealth, welfare, healthcare, and overall um, uh, social administration within the country. And that is doomed to fail because more debt simply means more interest payments and they haven't got the money coming in to service that particular debt. So rising debt in the US is corporate is a government debt and you've also got rising household debt in the US that is an alarm bell because late payments have doubled over from 2023 late payments is the last step before defaults when it goes to defaults then the banks effectively have to write off that debt because they'll never get it back so that will impact the balance sheet of the bank so overall you've got a lot of red flags flying and they're not from China. Um, in addition to that, you've got geopolitical with escalating regional conflicts in Israel, Lebanon, Israel, Hamas, Iran, the Houthis, um, Iraq, Syria, Iraq, Syria attacking um, American forces. Um, so the main sponsor behind that is Iran, and Iran itself 
is backed by Russia and China. China needs Iranian oil. So the escalation of geopolitical tensions is going to continue rising within the within the Middle East, and that's going to obviously push up or make oil very very volatile. Oil being a major component of inflation. In addition to that, with the Yemen Houthis, which is an Iranian backed terror group, be uh, firing on Western shipping in the Red Sea, then Western shipping has to be diverted around the Red Sea, around Africa, and that is causing a jump in freight costs, container costs, and that is going to feed into inflation as well. So overall, the Fed and the other central banks are going to be in a dilemma or have a dilemma as to what to do. Why? Simply because that as inflation moves up and they want to reduce interest rates, they're going to be put into a catch-22 situation. As they lower interest rates, inflation is going to move even higher. So overall, when you mix between the geopolitical and between the economic, you've got a lot of warning signs there that the, that the markets seem to be ignoring, but you need to pay attention to. As regards real estate, commercial property is in a pretty shocking state and vacancies are rising. That is going to impact the banks who have loaned money on commercial real estate when they don't get the interest payments. So that debt's going to have to be written off. And if there is going to be rising unemployment, then that's going to affect regular residential properties as well. The best thing they could do is convert all the commercial property into residential property and that would definitely alleviate some of the pressure when it comes to uh, property when it comes to residential property that's more or less it. it's quite a lot quite a long session today this is may valensky with driving markets you can subscribe share you can join the telegram program you can also see my books on amazon uh, we're